But y'all got to meet our first special guest earlier, old Captain Ron. Hey, so we had two special guests. Uh, underneath, underneath the uh, the wig and the attitude, you might say, there's a man named Ronnie Kelly. And he's a very good friend of mine, and he's done something that not a lot of people have claimed to do. This man's paid his bills, supported his family tournament fishing before. He's made a built a very successful guide business out here. He left for a little while, and now he's back full time into guiding again. And here he is right here. Ronnie, come on out. All right. And I'm going to tell you guys, this guy right here has been fishing these East Texas waters his entire life, except for the four years he, he went and served in the, in the United States Marine Corps. But he's an absolute stud on the water, especially out here in East Texas. And I've fished with him a lot because we're really good friends. And I know a crankbait and a jerkbait are two of his favorite, most favorite things in the world. And every time the water starts getting cold, he won't even talk to me without saying the word jerkbait. And he's caught a lot of giant bass on it. Yeah, I know. He, he looks a lot like Captain Ron. He does look a lot like Captain Ron. So, so this is Ronnie Kelly. Like I said, I told you guys all about. Uh, if you want to find him, want to look up his guide service. It's Captain Ron Big Bass on Instagram. And it's Captain Ron's guide service. Guide service page. on Facebook. Um, you got a website yet? Uh, my Facebook page. I'm not doing the website. Okay, so Cap Captain Ron's guide service on Facebook. It'll be it'll be uh, probably Lake Fort Pro Fishing Guide. That's what it was before. Somebody yeah. stole it, and it says Captain Ron Kelly. And it's like salt Somebody water, dude. I'm going to find him. Well, gonna you might him. have lost it, too. I'm not. <laughs> be the first one I've been against. And not, yeah. Uh, not, not not towards you. Yeah. Somebody not suing you. That'd be the first time. Yeah, I believe that. I can definitely believe that. Anyways, Ronnie Kelly talking about a jerk bait, which is a phenomenal big fish getter. I won't take any more from you. Ronnie, take it away. Let him know. All right. Let's talk about jerk bait fishing. Um, I started guiding out here in uh, 2009. And... Um, at that point, I've thrown a jerkbait a whole lot. I just hadn't caught the size fish uh, that get caught out here on a jerkbait. And so um, pretty pretty quickly, I realized that to be successful in the winter out here and catch some of these fish that these guys catch, you have to throw a jerkbait. And so um, I don't throw a jerkbait year round. You know, there's a lot of guys, you'll see these guys on tour like Kevin Van Dam, Kelly J, Hank Cherry. These guys are just jerking year round. That's just not my deal. Um, I've done it, it's just not my deal. This time of year though, I like to throw a jerkbait. And the reason is, the water gets really cold and the fish get lethargic and it's and it's it's kind of hard to, to to get them to move and you know everybody's throwing a jig everybody's throwing a trattle wrap and all that sort of deal and there's a lot of fish that like to pull up and suspend and they just don't like to move a lot and you know i heard somebody talking about an alabama rig earlier and that's that's a really good bait um a jerk bait's kind of like a finesse presentation um for suspended fish so I'm going to talk about my gear. This isn't my actual rod. I, I, I kind of got out of fishing for a little bit. Somebody stole my jerkbait box, and I've been looking for it for about a month. I feel like Peter Pan looking for his marbles, but um, I had to start over. So I got this little rod. I throw my jerkbaits generally on like a 6.6 six to 6.10 medium action rod. Um, I throw a 6.6, six, 6.7, six, six, 6.8 six, because I'm 5.6. Some of you guys are a little bit taller. You don't have to worry about slapping the water, you know. Um, I throw a medium action rod. And really, I brought two rods. And the reason is is because I, I ordered some new jerkbait rods, and they haven't got here. And uh, so I'm having to throw this on this old, just regular medium action graphite rod. I like to throw something with some glass in it, OK? I think I think this time of year, um, the, the fish don't tend to get the bait in their mouth a lot, you know, um, especially on a jerkbait. Has anybody ever watched videos of jerkbait fishing? Underwater tactical bassin's got a really cool video. Has anybody seen the tactical bassin video? It's freaking awesome. One of the best things you've seen it. They they go up and they slap at it. So you know, a lot of times the bass get the the jerk bait in the side of the head. You know, um, and so I I throw a composite rod. This sorry, can you tear your store up? I stole the rod this, this rod right here. Don't interrupt me. You're not. Don't interrupt me. Um, this this rod is one I throw. Kistler makes this rod. So this rod's got graphite up to right in here and then it turns into glass. And so this glass tip, all right, I believe, I started guiding down at Falcon in 2011 and um, you got a lot of open water. You got trees and bushes, but you have a whole lot of open water. And I was throwing a lot of a lot of graphite on my crankbaits, you know, because you can, you, you substitute sensitivity when you pick up um, any kind of composite or fiberglass or anything like that. You substitute a lot of sensitivity. But, you gain the ability to keep the fish pinned a lot more, you know. And so, when it comes to jerkbait fishing, you're already struggling to get them hooked. If you guys have watched the tactical bass in the video, they're coming up, okay. You're looking for suspended fish. Um, I'll throw 
a composite rod or a fiberglass rod, a medium action rod. I don't really want a, a, a lot of butt on my rod. And the reason is when I'm jerking the jerk bait, I don't want to pull the bait. And I was talking to Hayden earlier about this. The, one of the most important things in frog fish and jerk bait fish and anything like that is to not pull the bait. When you start to pull the bait, you completely kill the action. Um, there's a big debate on whether or not to tie a loop knot. Anybody tie a loop knot on their jerk bait? Any, any of you guys tie a loop knot? All right. You're, I'm telling you now you're wrong. I promise you. I promise you. And I'll take you to any tank, the clear water tank like a Bass Pro Shop, and you can jerk your jerk bait and you can jerk your jerk bait, and I, mine will be 10,000 times better. You, am, I, am I exaggerating? No. It's, it's night and day. And it doesn't matter if you're throwing a Mega Bass or a Lucky Strike. It doesn't matter if it's $23 or $3. If you tie a loop knot and you have the right equipment, you can make that bait do amazing things. And that's what will that's what'll pull those fish. So um, I use a 6.6 six to 6.10. I like a 6.10, especially on the deeper jerk baits when I'm trying to get a really long cast, you know. Um, I've been throwing the 6 cents Provoke, and they make two different sizes. They make just a regular suspended jerk bait. Um, and then they make a, a deep diving jerk bait. On that deep diving jerk bait, I like that 610 so I can make a longer cast, you know. Um, but I want a medium action. I don't want a medium heavy. Um, I don't want any kind of uh, any kind of backbone to it. I want I want a real limber rod. Um, now, you, you start to get worried about the fish getting in the trees. And man, this time of year when you're throwing the jerk bait, the fish just start doing a whole lot. I mean, they 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 turn into mush kind of, you know. Um, uh, a lot of times on a jerk bait, it, you'll just I'll watch my line, you know, and my line will shoot out. And when I pull into them, it's just mush. So um, Mike was talking about the two types of jerk baits: suspending a regular jerk bait. I don't really throw a regular jerk bait. This is uh, if you guys kind of see this jerk bait right here. I know some of you guys don't throw a jerk bait now. You might act like you do, but there's not a lot of people throw a jerk bait because it's just such a slow presentation. If you're throwing it this time of year and you're throwing it right, it takes a long time. Um, this is a deeper jerk bait. You guys see the bill on this sucker right here. It's uh, it's just a deeper bill. Good night. That's some good hook right here. Everybody see the bill on this? All right. And here's your regular jerk bait. Now, the first thing I do when I pull a jerk bait out of the package is I take the split ring off. All right. So I take the split ring off, and this and the reason I take the split ring off is I'm going to tie a loop knot. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to tie a loop knot. Um, here in a minute just so you kind of understand. So loop knot basically is going to give you about an inch of slack in, in your jerk. And so when you twitch the bait, the bait's already got a full inch that it's going to play with versus being pulled. Does everybody understand what I'm saying when I, I say pull the bait? So when I'm, when I'm jerking, I'm going to point my rod right at my jerk bait and I'm going to pull it and then I'm pointing back and that's when I start my twitch. Okay, so I've already pulled the bait a full, a full jerk length and then I'm going to start jerking. So my line's just doing this in the water and it's slapping the water and doesn't look like I'm doing a lot and the jerk bait is going absolutely crazy down there. Um, let's talk about where to throw a jerk bait this time of year. There's a lot of different places, but we're, we're looking for suspended bass. We're looking, you know, you're driving over and you're like, gosh, dang it, man, I see them, but they ain't on the stinking bottom. I can't throw a crankbait. I can't throw a Carolina rig. I can't throw a jig. They're not going to bite a spoon. I'm trying to throw a swim bait down there. He's in six foot. They say one foot per second. I counted to six and I started reeling and nothing's happening. All right. The jerk bait comes into play. Um, Points out at Lake Fork, points, creek bends. Um, there's a group of boat houses in Big Mustang or, or boat slips in Big Mustang that are pretty deep. Uh, jerk bait's incredible around boat houses. I mean, freaking crazy around boat houses this time of year. If you find deeper boat houses on um, points and stuff like that, uh, where the fish will kind of get right up under, you know, they'll be sunning. They'll, you'll have a shade line this time of year. They'll sit right on the shade line. Um, everybody familiar with Little Caney? You start up in the mouth of Little Caney, every single point on your left. Every, every stinking one of them's got a 10 pounder sitting there waiting to eat a jerk bait this time of year. Um, I'll get out there sitting, you know, just kind of depending on where I see them. They're talking about side skin. I'll come through, especially if there's trees. I like to throw the jerk bait around trees because those fish that they're coming, all they're doing is they're coming up and they're sunning. You know, they're sitting up there. They don't have to use a lot of energy and they just sit there and they wait on bait. And the bait, the bait pulls up in the winter with the sun, the water's warm. You know, bait doesn't like to be cold. So those fish sit up there and they get real hard to catch. And the jerk baits, you know, swim bait and that sort of deal is just kind of the key. So I'll find the points um, with the fish or, or, you know, creek bends, anything that's got the fish that are kind of off the bottom. And I'll take my jerk bait. And, and my retrieve when the water's, you know, really, I like, I kind of like to throw it in cold water. If you can get water in the 40s, man, it's, it's freaking killer. But 55 and blows when I really start to throw it. Um, 
I think there's some better options out there. I think the bite of swim bait a little bit better um, when the water's in the 55 degree or, or more range. You know, I think you can crank trees and catch them. Um, but when that water starts getting to that 50, 48, and boy, I get excited because you can go out there and you can twitch that crankbait. So I'll make a long cast into wherever they're at. You know, if it's trees, I'm not trying to hit the tree. Okay, there's a lot of drawing power. And one, one important thing I need to say, I'll throw a jerk bait in dirtier water. You know, you, and everybody remember the old rogue with the gold belly and black back, that color? What do y'all call it? It's uh, gold reactor. Gold reactor, okay. I'll throw that in some dirtier water, but man, I just don't really throw. I, the deal is I'm only throwing a jerk bait this time of year. So I don't really throw it in muddier water. I, I think there's better options, but I'll throw it in clear water. Um, um, I like a high sky. You know, really, I don't like a lot of wind because the fish are generally looking up. I want, you know, if the fish are, if, if I'm in 20 foot and, you know, they're four foot off the bottom, to me, that's not a suspended fish. If that fish can see four foot, then I've got, I've got some better presentations. I don't expect the bass to swim down in the winter, but I think there's some better presentations. But when I'm in 20 foot of water and those fish are in six foot of water or 10 foot of water, that's when I start throwing the jerk bait. So I'll make a long cast. I'll reel it down five or six cranks and I'll start to jerk. Now my cadence is real similar to what I would do with a frog. When I throw a frog, I'm going to throw it out there, I'm going to twitch, 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 twitch. I don't have any kind of steady cadence and I think a lot of people do. You know, you'll see people that'll just three, three, and I don't. I fish it a little bit different. I'll fish it, twitch, 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 and then pause. The pause to me is the most important thing. The colder the water, the longer the pause. When it's, you know, 53, 54, 55, you don't have to pause very long. When it starts getting into the low 50s, the upper 40s, man, that you just twitch, 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 and just let it sit. And so it's like, remember back in the day or in the spring, you throw the fluke out there, and you just twitch it, and you just let it sit, and you wait on your line to tighten up? That's how a jerkbait bite will look. They'll just start to pull the line. So what happens is, you've got your tree, you've got your bass. You want to keep that bait above them. So when you're looking in your box, you're going, man, should I throw this big 300, or should I throw a regular jerkbait? It's going to depend on the depth. If they're in that, you know, 12 or 14, 15 foot of water, you need a deeper jerk bait. You know, you'll you'll pull, depending on the water clarity, out here at Lake Fork, you'll pull fish five, six foot maybe, you know. Um, but beyond that, you need to go to a little deeper jerk bait. If I'm seeing fish in that six foot, five, seven, eight foot of water in the tops of the trees, I'll throw a regular jerk bait. Um, my retrieves always vary. And I, and I try not to do the same cadence, you know. And if you guys will take your jerk bait and throw it out beside the boat, Pull, pull you a little slack and just twitch it. Just watch it and see what it does. You'll see the action. You'll understand. You know, everybody out here at Bass Fishers understands how a bass works. And a lot of times that jerk bait's just sitting. And it'll make that one twitch and then it'll stop. And those suckers, they can't help it. And they'll come up and they turn on their side and they just punch at it. That's that's what they do about 90% of the time. That's why you get a big old side uh, hooks all across the side of their mouth. They just come up and they just hit it and they go back down. And I think a lot of that has to do with them just trying to kill the bait and let it fall. Um, something else that'll happen with a jerk bait versus a lot of other baits is you'll get a school fired up. You won't even know there's a school, especially if you're in an area like Little Caney that's got trees everywhere and the bass aren't necessarily stacked up on this tree, but there's one here, one here, one here, one here, and this one gets fired up and he comes up and he does this number, all of a sudden you got another one coming up. And you'll twitch at jerk bait. And in fact, yesterday I was at Lake Athens off the point and I was just twitching, twitching, twitch, and it just went whack. I mean, I, I had a lot of slack in the line and I felt it and nothing no i mean nothing i look on my graph and i mean man it was just like or just red streaks everywhere so i knew what happened that sucker came up and hit that jerk bait and then all of them came up after it and just went crazy ended up catching fish on jerk bait there um but my cadence will be jerk to jerk 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 and then just pause and that to me the pause i mean it can be you know 10 15 seconds you know but that pause is when they'll do it and i've had a i tell this story all the time the first year i was guiding had a guy come in here, and this guy, let me tell you the, story, the, the whole story. This guy had, had like mesothelioma or something, some real bad deal, and he'd gone through a bunch of chemo, and he brought his nephew down for a fishing trip. He had just got over this, this cancer, and so we were fishing in uh, Little Pinson, back sitting right in the middle of the creek, throwing our jerkbaits up towards the boat docks. Twitch, twitch, twitch. And, uh, man, we were catching. Me and the nephew, we were freaking whacking them. And so uh, the old man goes, Ronnie. What's it feel like when they grab that dirt bait? And I said, hey partner, they'll about pull the rod out of your hand. Cause they were coming up eating it. We were throwing that gold color and they are coming up grabbing it. You know, and a lot of times when they come up and they do get it, it's an instant pull cause they're coming up and they're going straight back down. Man, about, about an hour or two later, he's sitting there twitching that jerk bait and all of a sudden I hear Zoop! And the freaking rod went straight in the water. And he came in here and he bought a, 
He bought a, like a Calcutta DC and a G Loomis rod, man. It was crazy. And uh, so, anyways, um, it can get it can get pretty aggressive. Now, on the loop knot, does anybody know how to tie a loop knot? I'm gonna show you guys. It's pretty simple. It sounds complicated, but it's simple. You're not gonna talk to me. Like that. I got a question for you. Go ahead. So after you cast it, are you winding down like five or six? I do. To I get do. it down to depth, and then yeah. Start? So and, and another important thing that I didn't talk about is line size. You know, um, out here, I think 14, 15 pound line, depending on what you throw, what your brand makes. I throw Seaguar. I think 15 is pretty good. Um, I've thrown 12 a lot. I, I in fact. I haven't thrown 15 as much as I've thrown 12. I just feel like I can get away with 15 out here. I don't, you know, um, on these deeper jerk baits, uh, some of the Lucky Craft stuff like that, the one that uh, Six Cents make, 12 is a lot better. And the, and the reason 12 is a lot better is not just to get the bait down, but it also gives it a little bit more action, the lighter the line. But I'll throw it, especially on the deeper diving crank baits. Now, to, to answer your question, I will make an extra long cast on that deeper dive, that deep dive, because I want that bait to get down there to the depth that I needed at before I start doing anything. Cause I want to keep it kind of in that strike zone. But yeah, I'll reel it down like that with my rod tip all the way in the water. I'll do that five or six times. I'll pull up and then I'll start my jerk. Um, Just grab one. Let me get here. Here's something. I, I think your jerk blade will go deeper jerking it down than it will reeling it down. Well, I don't know. I've, my deal is I've kind of tested it. I've done these. Like I, I was going up to Bass Pro Shops a lot doing the tank demos, and that's where I started to really figure this thing out. Yeah. And you're probably right, especially when you're making those long jerks yeah, right there. Jerks it'll it'll get shoot it down. It down. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Um, if I didn't agree, I wouldn't argue. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, time is. You throw fluoro or mono? Always fluoro. Always fluorocarbon. I throw fluorocarbon on everything other than something that's going to sit on top of the water. Uh, fluorocarbon sinks. Now let's let's we're going to get we're fixing to get in depth here. So we're going to start talking on on the jerk bait. Your jerk bait needs to suspend. If you want it to rise, you know, if the water's a little warmer and you want it to kind of float, you know, there's things you can do. But man, to me, if that sucker will stay right there, that's the absolute number one price. I just don't think they can handle it. I just I don't. You keep it right there, and you do that right there, and they're looking at it. It's over. I mean, it's you're yelling for the net. Um, some of the way, some of the ways to get this thing down a little bit more. You and, and they don't always come out of the package sitting right. So suspended dots are really good. I don't really put them on the body, but I'll wrap them around the shank of the hook. Um, going from a number four or a, a number six to a number four hook. Sometimes I'll do it. Taking the the split ring owner makes a real heavy split ring. You can change the front split ring. And get it down a little bit, um, but man, it's really important that that jerk bait sits just like that in the water and doesn't move. Those, and they will they will come up and knock the snot out of it. So, a loop knot to me is one of the easiest knots to tie, and I'm I'm redneck, so I'm gonna stick this in my mouth a bunch. But we're gonna tie an overhand knot. Like this. Everybody, see what I got? I just got a loop. That's all I've got. I'm gonna take my bait without a split ring. Remember, I've taken the split ring off of this thing. I don't, I don't even know why they come with them. And and that's you know, and I think probably about half the people out there argue with me on that. And see, and, and here's another thing, man. People will say that this knot won't get them in. I've got I've got a, several double digit fish. I got an 11 and a half out here. I caught an 11 and a half, and then two casts later caught a nine pounder on this jerk bait right here on a loop knot in trees and didn't have any issues. So I'm going through my bait. Now I'm going to take my line. All right, y'all see my loop right here? All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my line and go through that loop six, seven, eight times. I don't know how many that is. Now I've got, I've gone through my loop over here with one knot and I've gone through here six or seven times. I'm going to keep my finger in here and I'm going to pull it tight. Now this is where it's kind of tricky. You don't want to burn up a lot of your line so you can kind of let that that tag in hold that knot on your finger pull it down kind of towards the bottom there then pull it out take your main line and just tighten it just like that all I've done is I've, and this is a small loop but you can see where I put a small loop right here I like about an inch on my loop okay if you get too much you'll catch that front hook 
All right, and that's that's a no no. I don't think it messes it up, but I always feel like if a bass sees it and it's all jacked up, they won't bite it the next time. Um, so, but about an inch on that loop. Everybody get that? And I'll show you guys this knot. I, I again, I believe in this knot, man. I've caught. I, I mean, I've caught all of them on this thing right here. I emptied a pond one time on this knot right here. <laughs> So, anyways, I'm trying to think if I've covered everything. There's a lot to talk about on this little bait because... Be careful, don't pull a little dance. <laughs> you can't break this rod, it's a Kistler. The deal is, is there's a, there's a lot to jerk bait because you're gonna get a lot of bites on it and you're gonna get some really big bites. And, and you just, there's not, a, there's not a whole lot of other presentations where you can take a bait in front of a bass that's really lethargic and make it stop. You know, there's just not just sit it. And again, the conditions that are prime, not and I'm not saying that they don't bite at other times. I mean the shad spawn, it's it's insane, especially around grass. Um, but my deal this time of year, and what we're looking forward to is the December, January, February, I mean realistically early March, those pre spawn points where they're pulled out on, man, they'll tear it up. Um, but I don't think there's a lot of baits that, that'll catch those big fish like this. And the guys that have been out at Lake Fork a lot, I mean, you know, you hear the stories of these giant fish coming on a jerkbait. So, anybody got any questions? I, I probably didn't go over everything I, I should have. Does that not have a specific name? Luke Knot. Just Luke Knot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, people people ask about knots. I, there's, I, I, there's about five or six different knots, or more than that. But the best way to learn a knot is to get on the internet. Um, and look at somebody smart, you know, Kelly J, somebody like that. Don't watch a ding dong like Billy Lawson or Mike McPartland. You know, get on there and find, uh, um, Brent, Brent Ayler. Uh, somebody, some of the California guys that throw a jerk bait a lot, they'll show you a lot of really good knots. You know? Yeah, Ayler's, Ayler's a good one. I know Ayler, he uses a, the loop knot, he'll use the king sling wings in scenarios that are real heavy. So a king sling just to double up. Like he said, it's whatever you think is best for you and what works the best for you. And a loop knot's the best, so if anybody tells you a split ring. And I know I heard a deal the other day said KVD throws a split ring. The deal is, man, if you go into a tank and watch it, you can see the difference. I mean, it's night and day difference. Um, but the biggest deal is to not pull the bait, and that's why you need a medium action, really, really limber rod. And you make sure, and, and if, you're, if you're jerking and you feel something, if you jerk that bait and you feel that jerk bait, you're jerking the bait. You just want to feel the line. And a popping frog, it's the same stinking thing. Cool. I'll take a popping frog out there and twitch, 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 and I'll let that butt of that rod, in fact, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. I'll take the butt of that rod. I like an eight, eight and a half inch butt on my rods. My rods that are coming, they both have eight and a half inch butt. Um, but I'll, t I'll take it and slap it against my forearm, just like that. And what I think that does, I think it takes that bait. Have you, anybody seen the rip stop that Rapala just came out with? That's why they've got that tail on it, it's to make it stop. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing when I'm doing my frog. I let it strike and like it helps. It's the same helps thing with a frog. You're whack, 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 yeah. whack. And you're twitching the slack, not the bait. I didn't know that on jerk bait. You just helped me out a lot. Yep, yep. Thank you. Any questions on anything? What's the water tip today? I didn't check. Uh, 55 kind of seemed to be the general consensus of what we see anywhere where we went today. Uh, which is better. I mean, a couple days ago it was 53, so. And bridge corners, bridge aprons, jerk bait, bridge aprons, freaking killer. Pond dams, I mean, or dams. Anything anything that's real steep. Do you think sometimes some of that bridge apron and concrete can actually warm up too in the middle of just So all I'll tell you all, yes, absolutely. Lake Palestine, um, when it gets real tough up north. Oh, you about to get the juice up here. Yeah. We've talked about that. Yeah, we can talk about rocks. There's different kind of rocks that hold heat different. The, the rocks that, that hold heat the most are lava rocks. Your white chunk rocks will tend to heat up a little bit faster. Um, it's kind of like boat docks with wood versus boat docks with metal. You go on a boat dock with metal when it's real, real cold and the sun ain't out, it's cold. You go to a boat dock when it's with wood and it was sunny the day before, they're gonna stick to it a little bit more. You start seeing those black spots all over them and that sort of deal. Them black lava rocks, they yeah. they hold that heat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there is some on Palestine. If you can find them, it can be the deal. It's kind of like the ironite in, in the West Coast. So you got a lot of you can look for shoreline. It's got more iron color to it, and that that gets the heat. Yeah, I don't know nothing about West Coast. 
Except for some 90s hip-hop, baby. 90s Ain't that right? Tupac. East Fork and West Fork together, now you know you're in trouble? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Any more questions? No? No questions? Well, how about Ronnie Kelly, man? Didn't he do a great job tonight? Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of knowledge. He's he's a goofball, but he's our goofball. And it is when he when he finally you know turns the the on switch on. There's a whole lot of there there with him. So absolutely. Thank you, Ronnie. I for fish coming a lot. This. Thanks, but yeah, he I, fished a I lot. I fish a lot. Why did you not wear his Air, Air Force shirt? I did, man. He I wore it on the Marine Corps birthday. It's freaking horrible. He did have to wear it on the Marine Corps birthday. By the way, man, look at look at this. Thank you, every one of you. It's, it's even Stay. Thanksgiving holidays. Yep. And you chose to come watch us. That's right. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. We can't thank you enough. Yep. Thank y'all so much. And Mike, I know Mike did a great job on the electronics tonight, man. It, Anybody has really any good. questions on that, I'll be sticking around to answer a few of those. And you can always find me on Facebook or send me a message and I'll certainly help you all I can. And this man over here, Mr. Ken Donahue, thank you for letting thank us come you. here and use your facility, sir. Really appreciate it. They do a great job here at Lake Fork Marina. Folks out there watching, man, if you need lodging, if you need tackle, if you need food, come over here to Lake Fort Marina, eat at Tiffany's. The legendary Lake Fort Marina. The legendary Lake Fort Marina. It is absolutely one of the best marinas you will ever stay at, lodge at, fish at, whatever you want to do. It's an awesome one-stop shop kind of place. Um, done up right, too. All right, if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Y'all all good? All in? All done? Thanks, everybody, for staying. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fort Marina.